Hello and welcome back everyone to the next episode on Anubhav Learning Series with Advanced Fury Training. By far in this training, we have learned about how to set up Visual Studio Code, which is a free open source Microsoft tool, how to configure VS Code with Node.js, and also install the basic UI5 and advanced UI5 tooling. We have started consuming the UI5 tooling, the advanced features of UI5 tooling with Fury Run command, and the different configuration. In the last session, we talked about the middleware concept. We've used the app reload middleware. And in today's session, we will go ahead and discuss about multiple more middlewares in the system. So let's see what are all, what are all we are going to see today. So we will actually explore all the features of SAP Web IDE through the VS code. So by far, we've seen the app reload middleware. The middleware is typically used to load the application automatically whenever there is a change done on the application code. In today's session, we'll start with how to load SAP UI5 from Content Delivery Network, how to connect with your SAP OData service in the backend. We will talk about running SAP UI5 referencing with local computer, because in WebID we have this feature. If you are traveling in a in a in an airplane and you have very limited or no internet connectivity, still you can proceed and do the development. And all thanks to the concept of SAP UI5 local tooling. Then we will talk about how to deploy our application from VS Code to S4 HANA or any other SAP system for that matter. So let's get started. Our first topic for us today is UI5 reference from CDN. Okay, so let us see what we saw in today's session. So we saw all of this. We saw also how to use a app reload middleware in UIF tooling to load your application locally every time there is a change. So you can see this one is running local computer. If you go back to the um, to the system and if you make a small change here to your view. So if I go back to Anubo trainings, let me just put it on the left. Let me put the preview of local computer on the right. And if I just go back here on my VS code and make a small change dash new save immediately my application will load on the right side. Okay, I have to run it of course locally first. So I have to say fury run command or I have to say npm run start to start this. Yes, so that my application will reload automatically after I make a change. So in few seconds my application will start locally. You can see and now you see dash anubhav new. If I just go back and just remove this and say dot com and save, you can see it will automatically restart my app and I've got dot com. So this is the first middleware we saw, which is called app reload middleware. We've added the configuration step by step into the uh, into the YAML file. You have a YAML file for app reload. The second module, which, which which middleware which we saw was Fury Tools Proxy. There are two benefits. So main benefit is it is going to get rid of the course issue, which we have typically when we run uh, try to run an external access external domain while running on local machine. Uh, you're trying to access a different domain. It will give you a course error, the browser security. In WebID, we used to have a destination file in NeoApp JSON. As an alternate to that, in the VS Code with the, the latest UFF tooling, we have the Fury Tools proxy, which will proxy your request to UFF SDK for loading UFF dependencies, as well as SAP server, real SAP S4 HANA server, which you want to connect your OData to. So we've added this uh, next middleware, Fury Tools proxy. To VS Code, and eventually through this, we are connecting to our resource and also to our OData service. We have plugged in manifest JSON our our resource file, uh, sorry, our resource path for the OData service, and created a default model. Now we have appropriately changed also the binding as per our first training foundation training. All the binding has been changed here into the view one and view two, including the root match handler of view two to contact and get the data from the real entity set of real SAP backend OData service, which we have run. And then we added a configuration to test this local computer directly uh, by using this proxy in place and our server address. We don't need to create a destination file like we used to do in the past with Web IDE. Then as a next step, we also saw how to run SAP UI5 uh, libraries locally in your computer. If you don't have internet connectivity, you are traveling in an airplane 
and you want to build UI5 applications locally in your computer without internet, how can you load UI5 dependencies locally? So we've added all the configuration in the UI5 local YAML over here to load our UI5 framework locally. If you switch off your Wi-Fi and test now, it will also work fine. So you board into a flight, you start your, your application with UI5 server Fury run command with this configuration file, and then it runs completely in your local machine with runtime. You can develop an application offline. Then as a next step, we saw how to use uh, the next configuration for deployment. For deployment, we have to do multiple steps. So first we have to add deployment configuration with latest Fury tooling. We add deployment configuration, which creates UI5 deploy YAML file. In this file, it adds all the configuration required to deploy ABAP with a custom task called deploy to ABAP. After the task, it also calls an extra middleware, which is going to generate cache buster tokens, which you can eventually see once the application deploys. We add the server details in client and also the environment variable for user and password. Yes, so you will never hard code the username password here. Rather, you will take them from environment variable file, which is here dot env. Every developer will have a different username password. So you will create dot env file locally in your VS code. You will never push this to the git. So we added that in the git ignore and eventually it will pick up the username and password from the environment file. And then you have added configuration to deploy this app to SAP server with a name. And since I'm using TMP, I'm not giving a transport request. Otherwise, I would have given a transport request. Finally, when we go back and check package JSON, system also adds a deployment configuration where it is going to do a package. First of all, UI5 build command preload. It is going to generate the component preload.js file. It's then going to clean the dist folder. It is going to then use our deployment descriptor uh, YAML file to deploy this app and also the additional tasks like generating the manifest bundle and also generating the cache buster tokens in the system. Additionally, it will create a zip file into the system for us. Uh, basically, this is a Linux command. So if you use the same thing on the business application studio, you will eventually see a zip file will get created later on. I will also show you the same in Bass actually the same tooling works in your local computer as well as in business application studio and now eventually once we run the the npm run deploy command it will ask confirmation and finally you can see our app is available into our sap s4 hana system over here yes complete end-to-end -end local development using vs code and say complete alternative of web id tool no web id not at all complete development using vs code every single feature of web id have shown you here which you can utilize to do end-to-end -end development experience using vs code web id is a dead tool you can see it has generated cache buster tokens which we also discussed in the previous classes about ui5 cache buster concept in the fury advanced training and then you can see finally i can go back and check my sicf node when I run this node, eventually my application starts on the server. This time it's not localhost. You can see application started on SAP S4 HANA server and I'm able to access my real SAP ODATA service. Yes, and all the data is popping up from my real SAP server. Wow. And in the next episode, I will show you if your ODATA is down, how can you use mock server, Fury Sandbox, to create end-to-end -end application locally in your computer and run it locally in VS Code. We will also learn about migrating your existing plain UI5 projects to compatible to VS Code, compatible to um, business application studio in a new with the new UI5 tooling and Fury tooling. Thank you so much. With that, it's a wrap on today's session. Please like, share, subscribe this video and hope to see you in my next video. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Goodbye.